sitting on my back, packing my bags, hoping that someone calls me back, planning my next trip on a map alone and traveling around the world. And I would wish that someone asked me to stay because I'm getting tired. Of walking away, my only destination is hope, and I'm missing home. And I love the adventures that I have. I just like to have a place to come back, a warm house of friends to tell them. Stories. Yes, I really like someone to call me back next time I pack my bags. Do you know how it feels to travel nonstop, to live in a train with nowhere to go, and everybody knows me around the globe, but when I Short letter just to let you know that I would like you to be
bang a drum all day But I don't mean that it's right Ooh, wait for you Wait for you Wait for you Come on in Come on inside And it'll be fine This trip was probably one of the best road trips I've been with the motorbike, so I'm going to share a little bit more about the uh, backstory and also give you a few tips and recommendations on the places that I've been. But before I do that, I wanted to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of today, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes and members across 150 countries who come together to find inspiration and take the next step in their creative journey. Whether you're into videography, creative writing, baking, or even dancing, there will be something for you on Skillshare. A class that I loved is Win Back Your Creative Confidence by Lucy Lambriex. This was short, sweet and hilarious. If you like me have a strong inner critic that stops you from starting new projects because you're not good enough and what are people gonna think and you're never gonna be as good as that person, then please watch this class. On Skillshare you can choose to take a class that teaches you more tangible skills like uh, how to draw a portrait or how to take good aerial footage using a drone, but you can also choose on one of the many personal growth classes. I like to mix the two depending on how I'm feeling that day. The platform is ad free so you can just focus on your learning and new premium classes are launched each week so there's always something new to discover. The entire catalogue is also now available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese and German. The first thousand people to use the link in the description will get one month free trial of Skillshare. So I've been wanting to go for this road trip forever since I bought the bike really but then life got in the way and I wasn't able to go. I think this was the perfect perfect period to go for this road trip because it's the end of the season so there weren't many people around in fact many of the villages was everything was totally closed um, and uh, it's not too cold that you can't go with a motorbike so if you ever have the chance to visit those areas even if you're not in a motorbike then September is definitely the perfect timing especially after the 10th of September because that's when uh, schools start again so the timing was perfect and everything was a lot cheaper as well so I started the first day by going to Artesela, which is somewhere I've been wanting to go forever. It's a contemporary art museum, as you saw in the pictures, and you can just stroll around and uh, have a look at like weird art pieces and just be like, huh, I like that though, huh, that's ugly. It's about nine euros um, for the ticket, uh, which is okay i think and uh, the only thing that i was a little bit disappointed about is that there weren't many art pieces made by women i only saw two and uh, i think there were about 30 to 35 and i was wondering why is that are women not inclined at creating big art pieces using wood um, I don't know what it is. If you have uh, an opinion or a comment on that, then please let me know. First night, I found an Airbnb that was in a castle. That was a great find. I paid 35 euro for one room and uh, breakfast was included. Uh, you had a view onto the, um, the apple crops. That area is very famous for the apples. I was a bit weirded out about going there because just before I, I, I left for going to this place I saw that the guy had replied to my Airbnb message you know you have to send a message saying why you're going there and why you want to stay there and I just said you know my name is Marina and I'm traveling with a motorbike and I think this is a the, uh, great place to stay and so I booked for one person for one night and the guy replied saying um, this price is for one person per night and then I hadn't replied to him and he said this, this price is for just one person with like <laughs> a very kind of aggressive tone and I was like what's wrong with this guy like I only booked for one person and for one night I don't know why he thinks that I'm accompanied maybe because I said with I'm with the bike and uh, maybe he doesn't get often woman alone with the bike so he just assumed basically that I wasn't alone that I was lying and I'll anyway so I replied and I said yes I'm alone I don't know why you're thinking that it's more than one person so when I went there I was like oh this sounds like a uh, kind of an old school guy but he was actually a nice guy and he gave me a lot of tips and uh, in the morning 
there was a friend of his who also had a role and film in Malayan so we we talked a lot and uh, again he also gave me some tips where to go so initially I was supposed to go to the lake of Tovo which is a fairly touristy destination but I had never seen it so I wanted to go there and see what it was all about um, but then this guy told me of a different route that is uh, kind of uh, known uh, for the motorcycle and so I decided to follow his advice and go that way but when I got there it was closed so I had to go back and take a different route and on the way down I stopped to like uh, reconsider my um, directions and the bike wouldn't start anymore so I had a little moment of panic the bike is dead I don't know what happened it just suddenly stopped working I don't know if maybe the battery cables have some issues I'm gonna try and put them out and then put them back in and see if that works otherwise it's gonna be the end of my journey I just um, went to pick up my tools that I keep under the seat and I realized that I must have used them and I didn't put them back which is so typical Marina and I'm honestly so mad at myself right now Yes. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah. I was able to remove the uh, connectors of the battery with the key and to put them back in and now it seems to be working. <laughs> oh, that was such a lucky shot. Probably not that great for the motorbike keys, but I have spares at home. Whew, that was close. I'm gonna continue the road trip and hopefully nothing else gonna happen and I might stop somewhere to get just a, a screwdriver just in case it happens again. That got solved, I was so lucky to be able to fix the issue and actually I never stopped to get a screwdriver and I didn't have any other issues with the bike but now I really need to find where those tools are and put them back under the seat. Um, but anyway, because the Paso Gavia wasn't uh, open which by the way I'm planning to go back because it looks amazing uh, then I went to another um, road that is called Paso Mortirolo and that was also really great and uh, it was full of motorbikes because I think that all the people that wanted to go to Paso Gavia then went to this pass and from there I arrived to uh, Bormio which is a famous uh, skiing station and thermal station as well and then the third day wasn't it third day? Yes, I went to one of my favorite places in this um, road trip, which was the Laghi di Cancano. And the road to get there was so like sketchy, but fun. And uh, I'm so glad that I went in September and not in summer, because in summer it's busy, there's a lot of cars, and there's also buses that go that way. And I mean, the road is tiny and there's no like bar barriers and you have like uh, tornanti you know those uh, pinhole pinhole bands um, so it would have been a nightmare um, in summer but I think September is the perfect um, time to go so you go up this road and then you get to uh, those artificial lakes called the uh, Laghi di Cancano and uh, if you're going with a motorbike and you want to go around the lakes um, I would recommend not using a road bike so you want a, a bike that can do a little bit of uh, light off-roading and there I took a lot of uh, drone shots and I'm, I hope you're impressed with them because um, it took me freaking hours to get them done because obviously uh, you have to fly the drone up set it all up then drive away with the bike come back bring the drone up and then edit it so that it looks like it's moving and uh, don't get me wrong, it's a lot of fun, but it's a lot of work as well to get just a few shots. Um, I think it was worth it. Let me know what you think. And then that night I went to the uh, thermal baths in Bormio. Um, there's a, a few places you can go. There's a really expensive place, which is uh, amazing. But again, expensive. I've never been, I only saw the pictures. And then there's one more budget option. It was 21 euros for uh, two and a half hours. And then the last day I went up to Paso de los Telvio, which is one of the most rated roads in Italy and some people say in Europe. Uh, so I was wanting to get it done. I had the occasion of doing it uh, when I came down from the UK to Italy with the uh, Honda, Jane Honda. But once I got to close to Paso de los Telvio, I was a little bit afraid. Of doing that road and uh, I had a few close calls with that bike meaning that I nearly fell uh, on a on a bend 
so I didn't because it was a uh, I don't know I think I had a lot of weight in my bags and I wasn't balanced so I didn't trust myself going up the road and I chose a different path but with this bike I feel so good in it so I decided to go up and get it done online and a few people that I asked said that the best way to do the Stelvio is actually going to Bormio not from Bormio because the visuals are better um, but uh, that is a more trafficked road and also uh, this going from Bormio to the other side was better for my um, for my itinerary so I went up early in the morning it was kind of cold and um, I went up this bendy road and I was like, oh, this is nice. I can't wait to see the actual Stelvio Pass. And then I saw like hotels and what looked like a peak. And I was like, is that the actual peak? Did I just do the Stelvio Pass road without realizing I did? The road was beautiful, don't get me wrong, but it wasn't as scary or as difficult as I thought it would be. So I got to the top and I was like, huh, was that all it was? Why was I so scared about it? Then from there, I went to another stunning place which is th which was the last um, stretch of the journey which was the uh, Kuron Verosta Kuron Venosta village so this is a very scenic place basically there used to be a, a village um, and then they flooded the uh, area to make an artificial lake for um, to make electricity in the 50s or 60s and so they evacuated the whole village and relocated people and uh, they just flooded the place and the only thing that you can see now is the bell tower peeking out of the, the blue waters and it's really like it's just you go there and it's like <laughs> it doesn't make any sense but it's beautiful and sad at the same time because those people didn't want to leave they were opposed to the to the dam and to the lake obviously that was the place where they lived and they just were obliged to leave they couldn't do anything about it and uh but that bell tower is pretty amazing and now it's a, it is a fairly touristy spot so that is it. I think that the bike now is um, not going to get a lot of action because, it, it, again, it is getting uh, quite cold. Uh, but next year I'm hoping to do many more road travels. I, again, as I said, I really feel comfortable with this bike. It feels like the bike that's right for me uh, compared to the Honda that I had before. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to more travels with it. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you liked this kind of uh, format where I share the, the nicely edited um, footage at first and then I give a little bit more of the background story at the end. And uh, thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Go and check them out if you have the time and I shall see you very soon.